All right, Shalom. I'm going to begin this lesson by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh, Shah, Waha, Raka, Kudash, which in the ancient Hebrew tongue would be the correct names of the Heavenly Father, His beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit. I also would like to give double honors to my teachers, the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much do honors and respect to the sincere brethren out there that's also laboring in this work. And as always, I want to say Shalom to the believers. You know, the Akim as well as the Akwath, which will be you brothers along with the sisters that subscribe to this truth as well. So, yeah, I just wanted to go into another quick lesson. You know, it's touching the times and seasons we're in, which will be considered monumental, especially in relation to those of us who have eyes to see and understanding that this is the very time in which the Heavenly Father, through His Son, is once more showing favor to his people, the children of Israel, starting with the elect of the nation of Israel. And that favor, if you will, is on display by way of the Heavenly Father allowing access to this gospel, the good news, the glad titans, and the message being that our warfare is finally accomplished and we will no longer drink of that cup, that cup of slavery, that cup of trembling. In fact, that cup would be passed over to our enemies, the very ones who afflicted us. Matter of fact, let's start off right there. In the book of Isaiah, the 40th chapter, and starting at the first verse, it says, Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your power. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem. Yeah, and what we read in here captures the very perfection balance and duality, if you will, of the Heavenly Father through His only begotten Son, meaning on the one hand, Yahweh Bashim and is actually sending death threats <laughs> to Esau and pretty much whomever out there who have aligned and associated themselves with the so-called white man. But on the flip side, the Lord is comforting you believers. And what contributes to that comfort? Well, let's read on. It says, and cry unto her, that her warfare is accomplished <laughs> and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished. Yeah, when you consider the children of Israel and the different captivities we was forced to endure and suffer under these various nations and most notable the so-called white man, well, that was actually an act of war from Yahweh by Shemir HaWashah. Seeing that we greatly offended and trespassing against the law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father through His Son, which pretty much provoked the Heavenly Father to wage war against us. And the curses recorded in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, pretty much is nothing more than a decree that cemented that act of war. Matter of fact, let me grab some real quick. We're going to go back right here in the book of First Ezra, the first chapter. In the 24th verse, it says, As for the things that came to pass in his time, they were written in former times. Yeah, for an example, you know, the ill dealings and treacherous acts, crimes and atrocities committed towards the children of Israel was written in former times. And again, most notable in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. See, again, as for the things that came to pass in his time, they were written in former times concerning those that sinned and did wickedly against the Lord above all people and kingdoms. And that would be concerning the children of Israel. All right? We was the only nation that offended, that sinned. Why? Because we was the only nation that was given the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Ba'ashim HaWashah. See? It says, And how they grieved him exceedingly so that the words of the Lord rose up against Israel. <laughs> so that the words of the Lord rose up against Israel. And again, most notably found in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, which consists of the curses that was foretold to rest upon the children of Israel. But that's nothing more than the words of the Lord rising up against us, which again was nothing more than a decree and an act of war from Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh well, now we're in the time where the Lord has sent forth glad titans, the good news that that warfare is accomplished. 
And this is what we read and right here again, when you go back here to the book of Isaiah, the 40th chapter in the second verse, it says, speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem. And this is what you're witnessing in the form of this word going forth. That's nothing more than your how about you, how was speaking comfortably to Jerusalem. See, it says, and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished. Simply put, the Lord has squashed the beef <laughs> and has extended somewhat of a peace offering to the children of Israel, which we understand only the elect will agree to those terms, that condition of peace. As it is written, only a remnant shall return. See, it says that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she have received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. See, so by us trespassing, against the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashem and Yahweh Shah that provoke the Heavenly Father to wage war against us. But again, we're in a time where that warfare is now ended or accomplished. Now, real quick, let's click on this word accomplished. Because again, the scriptures say, our warfare is accomplished. <laughs> yeah, and the Hebrew word here would be malah. Allah and it says to feel before to be for fullness abundance to be for be accomplished be ended be ended now when you consider you know uh, something that comes to its end anything that reaches its feel or its fullness well it's levels to it you know obviously the end of something is concerned in time which we will be in the end times but also geographically, the end or the fullness of anything in relation to the scriptures will be concerning America, Babylon, the great. <laughs> All right. So this salvation, this peace offering that the Lord will extend, will reach into the end of the earth. This is the time where Yahweh Bashem and Hawasha will once more show favor in the time of this captivity here in Babylon, the great. Matter of fact, let's prove that real quick. This is the book of Isaiah, the 45th chapter. And the 22nd verse, it says, Look unto me, and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. <laughs> Again, look unto me, and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. So that salvation that the Heavenly Father has promised through His Son extends to the end of the earth. See? Meaning geographically, again, look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth, for I am your power and there is none else. So when the scripture speaks about our warfare being accomplished, which we looked up that word accomplished, and it translates to something reaching its feel, its fullness, or the end of anything, well, obviously that will be concerning the end times, the latter times which we are in, but also this applies to the end of the earth, which geographically would be America, Babylon the Great. Matter of fact, let's click on this word earth. Because again, the scriptures say, look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. <laughs> yeah, and the Hebrew word for this word earth here would be aratiza, aratiza, right? And it says land earth now when you stroll down here it says land country <laughs> country territory district region tribal territory piece of ground <laughs> so that salvation that the heavenly father has promised us through his only begotten son throughout the ages will finally be physically manifested right here in this particular country territory or district region and that would be america <laughs> babylon the great so according to the prophetic sayings found within the Holy Scriptures, our warfare will be accomplished right here in America. <laughs> Which brings me to the book of Micah, the fourth chapter in the 10th verse. It says, Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail, for now shall thou go forth out of the city, meaning we will be driven out of our land, Jerusalem. 
it says, and thou shalt do well in the field. Yet a field being a metaphor for the world. Thus fulfilling the prophecy spoken of in the book of Isaiah, the 11th chapter and 11th verse, where Israel would be driven and scattered to the four winds. See, it says, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. <laughs> and thou shalt go even to Babylon, which Babylon translates to America, the place of our captivity to this very day. See, it says, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. There, <laughs> meaning in Babylon, shall thou be delivered. Yeah, let's read this again. It says, and thou shalt go even to Babylon, and there <laughs> shall thou be delivered. <laughs> there the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemy. So there you have it. For those of us in the know, we understand perfectly well that the very erecting of this place, America, Babylon the Great, means that destruction is on the horizon, but also the very existence and being of America, Babylon the Great, proves that our warfare is now accomplished and our salvation draweth not. So yeah, I just wanted to touch on that. Lord willing, it was edifying to the next time I say Shalom.